to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. I'm A.J. Hogue, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. Father of the Effortless English System, I train you, I teach you, you speak English fluently, you speak English powerfully, you speak English confidently, you, you, you speak English effortlessly. When you join my VIP program and you commit to my VIP program at, effort, oops, yep, at EffortlessEnglishClub.com, EffortlessEnglishClub.com, go there, commit, and don't quit. Here we go. All right. I apologize again for the uh, failed interview this morning. <laughs> I tried to interview Steve Kaufman and the, the streaming software I use. They did an update. Of course, that broke it. Seems like every time there's this, I hate updating software because they always break things like every time my computer shows it's time to update your operating system i always say no 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 right and it keeps bothering me because i know that is when i do it they're going to be all these problems they're going to create problems uh, because these companies are just you know the quality is going down 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 at these companies anyway that's exactly what happened they updated the software and then the microphone stopped working the sound stopped working for skype and i use skype for my interviews so anyway I, I tried to do another update finally i figured out a way to do it using a different software i think it's going to work now i'll test it one time uh, again and then reschedule steve for next week so i'll I'll be emailing Steve Kaufman, you know, this week. We'll figure out a time for next week to do our interview. And uh, I've got a, I'm also going to interview Ali Richards, another guy who speaks uh, several languages. I can't remember how many, three, four, five, something like that. And, uh, and then I've got several other people I want to interview. So I got to make sure the sound works. I did like a little, tried to do a little show after, you know, after all the problems, but I was very distracted uh, this morning uh, trying to figure out the sound stuff. So anyway, my apologies. Today, I was not planning to do a show today. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to answer some questions from social media instead, instead of just uh, the usual live chat, live stream chat here on YouTube. I'm going to answer mostly from Gab. We have a Gab group. And of course, I have my personal Gab. People follow me. They ask questions. Sometimes I you know, get busy and I'm, I forget to answer them. So I'm just going to go through my Gab and answer some of the questions from Gab. I'll, then I'll come back to our live group. And I can, we can chat about a few other things. Probably another short show tonight. And... Uh, then we'll be back again tomorrow, of course. And tomorrow we'll be doing our book club again. Book club. We'll continue with the book club finally. Back again with your money or your life. Okay, so let's just go to Gab. Because I would encourage you to follow. If you're watching on YouTube or watching anywhere, you see on my screen, this is where you follow me. Gab.com slash slash AJ Hogue. A-J-H-O-G-E. You know, Gab's free. It's just like, it's basically a version of Twitter, but without all the censorship <laughs> and uh, crazy politics and stuff. So Gab.com. Follow me there. That's really the only social media I use now. It's the only social media I use at all. I don't use Facebook really anymore. I don't use Twitter anymore. Um, I'm sick of those companies, the Silicon Valley companies. I'm tired of the censorship and they're spying on everybody and all their crazy left wing politics. So I'm just I'm done with all that. You're just going to gab's the place. If you want to chat with me, if you want to meet other effortless English members, social media, 
do it on Gab. So let's just go on Gab and I'll go through a few of my questions. Okay, this is my Gab. These are the questions. Okay, first, Katri asks me on Gab, no video, or says no video. And then we have a few other people. Uh, Miss Oud says, why is the video removed? Okay, yeah, I deleted today's video with Steve Kaufman. I deleted it. So if you're looking for the recording on YouTube, it's gone. Because it's there was no sound. He His half the conversation was silent. You just, you hear me talk and then silence. And then it's just lots of silence. So I just deleted it. And the second one, when I'm talking, I was very distracted. I, there's nothing useful in it. I just deleted both videos. So they're gone. Sorry. Okay, next question on Gab. This is posted in our group, our Effortless English group. Hi, AJ. How are you doing? I have a question of first language acquisition. Oh, first language. So babies. You suggest watching original TV shows, films for language learning. What about for babies? No. Most experts suggest as low as possible media consumption for this age. Probably 10 minutes max per day. I say zero minutes. Zero minutes a day. Babies, young children, zero minutes. They don't need that. They, they will learn their first language from the parents. You don't need any media. You don't need any media at all for your children to learn, your babies, to learn your language. The best language learning is interactive conversation with a child. Exactly. But we cannot do this all the time. You don't have to do it all the time. Just, just do what every parent does, okay? Your child will learn. What do you think as a father and language teacher? How much cartoons good acceptable for this age group? It's not acceptable. It's unacceptable. My rule for my babies, zero screen time, none. Not just babies. That's my rule for my, as they grow up as children. It's going to be the same rule. We don't have a TV in our house. So, no, you don't need that. Okay, don't worry. Okay, the babies, it's okay if sometimes you're not talking to the baby all the time, right? We don't talk to the babies all the time. Sometimes they just play by themselves, kind of just making little noises or quietly. They take naps. All that's normal. Okay, it's all normal stuff. You don't have to, for first language, for, you know, a little babies learning their first language, you don't really need to do anything. Okay, okay. Meaning, you don't have to plan anything. You don't need to make any special effort. Just talk to them and communicate them like a normal mom and dad. You know, playing and, hi, how are you? And mama, dada, you know, all the stuff. Every parent does it naturally, okay? you, you Every parent does this naturally with, in, with, you know, it's a natural instinct for all human parents. So you don't need to try any techniques. You don't need any methods. And you definitely don't need media. Okay, just, just play with your babies and talk to them like every other parent. That's enough. That's all you need. Okay, now Vadim mentions, uh, you know, about our my YouTube, um, YouTube memberships I just started. It says apparently in some countries it doesn't work. The join button. To support your channel on YouTube is not working in my country. I did some research. In a lot of countries, especially in Eastern Europe, you can't even see the join button. YouTube doesn't allow them. Please consider another way to make a membership for supporting your podcast. Uh, maybe I'll try, uh, you know, another company like uh, I could also set something up on uh, what there's subs there's one called Subscribe Star, I think, and there's one called. Uh, Patreon, maybe subscribe star. I'll try that. We'll see. Um, but anyway, don't worry about it. It's just, it's not like a, it's just a little extra way for people to help support the channel. You know, my main, the main business for Everest English is our lessons. Ah, this is nice. Nutella pot lover says, I bought a notebook just to write AJ's advice. Nice. Abadamane, one of our regulars here on YouTube, is back on Gab. Welcome back to Gab. Thank you for coming back. I know you had some technical problems. Now you're back. Great. Okay, Michael Silvan says, Hey, teacher, when will you share with VIP members the movie lessons? The Matrix movie lessons. Oh, they're coming. I talked to, I had a meeting two days ago with our 
programmers, they are setting up the system. They said maybe about one month, one more month and it's ready. Okay, another question or comment on, uh, suggestion, I guess, on Gab. Izel says, um, AJ Sun, <laughs> how's it going? I have a suggestion for your live interviews. What if you include on your list our top challengers on the leaderboard so they can share the fruits of their efforts? That's not a bad idea. Now, some people are shy. And also, of course, this was a listening and reading challenge, not a speaking challenge. But I might do that. I could invite, like, you know, the top two or three for listening and reading to come on to to be interviewed by me if they want to. Just optional. I like that idea. I think I'll do it. And then Lisa's asking, where can I find the page to for the YouTube memberships? Like, I don't think they're even... I might not even be active yet. I just set it up. I'm not sure if it's active because YouTube has to approve it. Let's see. Um... Yeah, I don't even see it on my channel yet, so might not be even ready yet. I'm not sure. If somebody has, if somebody actually has joined the YouTube memberships, if you were successfully did it, please tell me, because as far as I know, it's not yet active. It should, should be soon. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is, I don't know if this person is trying to troll or if they're being uh, genuine, but anyway, it's a decent comment. So this has got someone named The Real Spartacus. It's in Spanish. I'll just translate it to English. Hi, Spanish speakers. Are you ready to be a minority in your own country, in your own nation? <laughs> no? Then plan your escape now. You have to improve your English. Perfect your English with this man. Uh, that teaches advanced English just here on Gab, AJ Hoag. That's nice. Thank you. Yeah, and then he wrote it in German. Apparently he speaks German too. That one I can't translate, but I am guessing it says the same thing. Okay, here's Anya. Ah, yes, Anya's visiting Osaka. This is Anya from Mexico living in London. I sent you a gab a few weeks ago asking if I can visit you in Japan. You said January's fine. Yes. I will be in Osaka January on the 14th of January. All right. I'll put it on my calendar. Okay, let me just put it in right now. Oh, meet Anya. It's already on my calendar, Anya. <laughs> um, looking forward to meet you. Please let me know e what email address I can contact you. I'd like to know how the babies are. I want... How old are the babies? Um, let's see. Well, the babies right now are eight months old. So November, so December, they will be 10 months when you come. That's very nice. Okay, yeah, Anya, I'm looking forward to seeing you. I'll send you an email uh, to, so that you can contact me. So as I said, you know, if you visit Osaka, Japan... Please, uh, you know, message me here on Gab because uh, I'd be happy to have coffee with you. I like to meet different members when they visit here. And when I travel, I also like to meet members in different places where I travel. Wow, the same guy linked, and now he's writing in French. Interesting. Oh, here's here's the guy. AJ, how are you? This is this guy, Real Spartacus, who's, rec who's recommending my channel in multiple languages. Are you okay? You seem to have lost some weight. I was sick. I used your videos often for advanced students a few years back. You seem to, be, to have been red-pilled, too. Welcome. Yes, indeed. Red-pilled. We did a lot of shows about and podcasts about the red pill and we're still it's a process right there seems like there's always a bigger red pill 
Every time you think, ah, oh, now I'm red-pilled, now I am awake to the truth, I know the whole terrible, ugly truth, and the good truth, then it just seems like, you know, you get comfortable, and then another big one comes. <laughs> and you realize, ah, there's more. So you just got to keep, keep your mind open. Keep your mind open. So cool. Thanks for the uh, recommendations, uh, Spartacus Rhino. And uh, it looks like you speak French, too. Very cool. Oh, Slavika says, I uh, just listened to your podcast, The School's War on Free Speech. The podcast is fantastic. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much. I appreciate that one. I appreciate the comment, and I like that one. That's a good podcast. I remember it. There's Fernanda saying, I hope Tomoe gets better. Take care. Yes, my wife is now better. My children are pretty much better, pretty much recovered. So we all got sick, and now we're all mostly recovered. My nose a little congested, but mostly recovered. All right, just a couple more here from Gab, and then I'll jump over and I'll answer some YouTube questions. Okay, Isaac is answering, asking the same question about the Matrix movie lessons. About one month. One more month, guys. And once we set this one up, then the next movie, Jerry Maguire, will be able to add that much more quickly for VIP members and for selling also. Okay, now here's someone, Mar Marine, is ask, uh, saying, I've enjoyed your podcast. Your topics are very interesting. Red pill, blue pill, home pool, uh, homeschooling, etc. At least recently I listened to something you said, the truth about dating girls and attracting girls. It's a topic I found interesting, but you've never made a great show about it. Please, can you give more information? Okay. I know you're married and this is a place for English learning, but I'm curious as it seems that you know something that most of us ignore about chasing girls. Yeah, well, I learned something the very, very, very hard way. Okay, so this, by the way, you know, of course we know this, 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 uh, I'm going to stop there and we'll go... go I'll answer this question and then I'll go back over to YouTube. But first of all, we know from our movie lessons that where does red pill and blue pill? It first comes from The Matrix. It comes from the movie The Matrix. Right? We learned that. We saw it in the movie. Next, however, uh, the next group in the kind of the real world, <laughs> in our culture, American culture mostly, uh, that started to use these uh, this this as slang, red pill, blue pill, were pickup artists, what are called pickup artists, dating guy men interested in getting girls. And they started to make this these two phrases popular. And so for them, they would use it in the same kind of way, meaning blue pilled is a guy, a man, a, usually a young man, who has these kind of media, or, you know, it can come from parents, it comes from the culture, these kind of um, lies about what women, you know, how do you attract women, right? How, how should you date? How can you attract a girl? How can you keep a girl and find a girlfriend? And they, you know, most of these guys at that time, they were not interested in marriage, okay? They were not looking for long-term relationships or building families, now, some of them have recently made some big changes. Roosh is the one I mentioned. He became a quite serious Christian. And uh, so he has this information, but he's using that information more uh, from the viewpoint of dating, but with a mindset to then build a family and have a real marriage and all this, which is great. That's fantastic. Roosh is a really interesting guy. But anyway, so they this... This became very popular in this area. These guys were out trying to figure out, how do I track women? How do I get girls? And it was a lot of guys. These were not handsome guys, and they were not rich guys, okay? I've seen pictures of some of them. I've met a few of them, actually. And they're kind of dorky, actually. Dorky. They're kind of, some of them are nerdy. Some of them are, they're not good. They're not great looking, okay? But that's good because they still figured out how to get a lot of very attractive girls, how to actually uh, get girls much much higher level you know we say you know than they than them right if you use the one to ten right if these guys were like a five <laughs> they were getting girls who were like sevens eights nines even tens sometimes 
Unfortunately, as I said, these they were getting girls, meaning they're just having sex with them. They're just meeting them in bars and clubs, taking them home, having sex, and it was that's about it. Um, but anyway, not going to judge them too hard because harshly because they did learn a lot. These guys figured out a lot of things about how does an average guy actually attract a girl. Forget the Hollywood bullshit and the and all and forget all the this this stuff people tell you. Be a nice guy. Just be a nice guy. It doesn't work because, uh, or at least it's not enough. It doesn't mean you, you don't have to be an asshole, but it's not enough. It's not really what attracts girls. So guys who don't understand kind of the the truths about attraction are called blue pilled. And then these guys, as they started to figure out all these uh, attitudes and methods, <laughs> they called themselves red pilled, red pilled, right? They started to see the truth. So it's another use of these red pill, blue pill. And most of my youth, I was super blue pilled about girls. I mean, super blue pilled. And I suffered a lot because of it. I mean, and did, just did so many stupid things. I was a super nice guy, very, very sweet, but too sweet. And uh, it worked against me. <laughs> um, that's all I'm going to say right now. If so, what would I recommend? Again, I always recommend the books, The Rational Male, The Rational Male series. I think there, there are three or four of them. Rational Male by Rolo Tomasi. Again, you have to understand, Rolo Tomasi, the guy who wrote it, He's one of these guys, these pickup artists, okay? He was, the, the techniques, you know, his mindset was, and I think it still is, just getting girls fast, right? Just getting girls and basically having sex with them and then goodbye and then get another one. Okay, so that's not great. However, you know, he's just kind of an average dude, average guy, and he's had great success. So he's, you can still learn a lot from the books, even if you don't want to do that. And hopefully you don't, even if you actually have a mindset to just to date and, uh, find a good, you know, really, you know, a good girl and get married and have children, which is hopefully you do, but you can still learn from these books and just ignore the part about, you know, getting lots and lots and lots and lots of girls. So I'd recommend those books because I'm still not like a super expert or anything, but it certainly made my life happier as I became more red-pilled on this topic. Okay. All right, let's just jump over to YouTube now and I'll answer a few questions and then go, like I said, to a little bit short to tonight, I think. Okay, I'm just scrolling through. Lots of people saying hello. So hi to everybody who's saying hello on YouTube. Great. Oh, Aldrin is saying, um, AJ, do you still do streaming on Twitch? Yes, Sundays. Sundays on Twitch. That's our movie club. We're doing Jerry Maguire, the movie Jerry Maguire. And the famous scene is coming. Show me the money. Show me the money. Oh, Kura says, I want you, I'm a social worker. I want you to say something about social work or talk about your experiences of being a social worker. Hmm. Yeah, I could maybe do that. I had some interesting experiences, some good and some not. <laughs> uh. This is nice. Bekal says, uh, just want to say I am addicted uh, to your stuff. I don't even get bored with your lessons while I'm practicing. Otherwise, I get upset early, feel sleepy. What should I do to get rid of this? So I'm not sure if you're saying you do or you don't. But anyway, if you get if you if you start to get sleepy or something or distracted or bored, uh, the best thing is get up and go, walk, walk, listen to the audios while you are walking, while you're moving your body. And of course, you can take a short break, too.
Oh, Gustavo. Hello again. I'm a Venezuelan in Chile. Wondering if you speak in your daily life as you speak to us. If not, could you speak at the same speed? Yeah, this is based... I'm speaking just naturally to you guys. You know, this is how I talk. Of course, the only unnatural thing is it's just me talking. One person. So, that's a little different. So, sometimes when we talk to other people, we change the way we talk a little bit, right? Like, if I was talking to someone much older than I am... Uh, Maybe, maybe I might be, you know, a little more respectful, a little more formal and polite. And if I'm talking to my best friends, I'm going to be more relaxed. And uh, but, oh, but generally, this is how I speak. Yes, I'm not trying to speak slowly. Um, 24, Isao says, AJ, who is your mentor? And really, books have been my mentors. I have not had many or any actual, like, real people mentor me in my life. Unfortunately, I think it would be nice, but, uh, probably a little too late now, I'm 51. But, I, you know, when I was young, really nobody. And so I had to figure it out myself, and I did it with books. I did it through reading and this is one of the great powers of books, so that even if you also don't have a mentor, an older, wiser person to guide you, to give you advice, to help you in life, if you don't have that in your life, maybe you don't, a lot of us don't, or didn't, but you can find a lot of that great advice and wisdom in books, especially old books. That's where I found it. I found it, that's in terms of like life meaning and philosophy and um, in terms of, you know, dating and attraction and in terms of business, all of those things. I found uh, mentorship or learning from books. Uh, Abraham Ali, we do more shows about marketing and sales. I can do that. Mm -hmm. Good suggestion. Remind me again sometime. I'll do it. Yeah, Vladislav has found a, one of the secrets here. What I found about girls in my 20s is they're most attracted to you when you're not trying to chase them. Ding, 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 ding. That's one thing. You don't try to attract. That is right. If you're... <laughs> um, there's slang that say guys who try to... They want a girl too much. They, we say they're thirsty. They're too thirsty. And the girls feel it. And it actually pushes them away. So that's right. That's one thing. Exactly. Oh, Slavika says, I'm late. I don't know the topic. Eh, there's no topic. I'm just answering questions. I did not plan a show today. Remember, I was going to do this morning. I was planning to have an interview with Steve Kaufman, and we had all kinds of sound problems, you know, technical problems. So that show got canceled, and I'm just doing a general answering questions today because I had no plan. My, my, my show got canceled. What's up? Just questions today. That's correct. Okay, now see, like Vladislav, now this is a point where, right. Uh, one of the pickup artists says, don't date girls over 30. Do you agree with this? I'm dating a 31-year-old girl. She's a year older than me, but I love her more than anyone else. Yeah, see, you know, you got to be careful about these rules, right? Remember, these guys, these first of all, these guys did not date much, Right. Well, most of these guys were not interested in dating. It was just sex, sex, sex. It's all they're interested in. And they they had sex one time, or maybe they, you know, for them, dating was like a few months. If you read all their stories, that's what they're about. Okay, that's what that's fair enough, but I no, I don't think you have to follow exactly. It's it's more of a general mindset of being confident, of having a purpose and a meaning in your life that is at, like at the, at you, at the center for you. It doesn't depend on a girl. It doesn't depend on anyone else, right? So that if you have a girl or you don't have a girl, it doesn't matter. You have some meaning and purpose in your life. And that can be, you know, a very large you know, thing, you know, it might be God or something really big like that. And then also in terms of even smaller things like your career or your 
your business or your vocation or you know other things that you love that are important to you your own family meaning your father your mother your brothers your sisters uncles aunts cousins etc your close friends that the more you have of all this it gives, makes you strong inside where you don't need 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 a girl for everything that's a whole lot of it right there that's a lot of it you know these guys developed a lot of all kinds of little tricky techniques but the truth is, I think it's more about who you are deeper inside is more important than all the little techniques. The techniques can work, but only short term. This is the problem, right? If you're not really a confident guy, if you don't really have purpose in your life, meaning you can pretend for a while, you can trick a girl, you know, for one night or a couple weeks, make her think you're super confident and all this. But if it's not really true, after a while, she's going to realize it. Everybody's going to realize it. And that's why, again, like these guys, a lot of them were just just kind of tricking. They were using sales techniques and other techniques and persuasion techniques. And they were very good at it, probably still are. But if they didn't have that real deep inside confidence and meaning and purpose and truth, then this is why they had to change girls all the time, right? Uh, so Vladislav, I would say, if you're happy, just keep going, you know, and but just 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 uh, develop other things in your life too, right? Right. Develop that strong purpose and meaning in your life that doesn't depend on any other person. So, yeah, you love her. Great. I'm glad you're happy. Enjoy. Yeah, Box is recommending a good book. This would be a cool guy to interview. He's cool. Uh, the book Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. Great book. I haven't read his book, but I've seen his, an interview with him. The Joe Rogan interview was pretty impressive. That guy, he's, he's a little crazy <laughs> in a good way. Like, he, he, he tortures his body. He, I mean, he, he's, he has so much willpower, which is incre incredible an amount of willpower, this guy, David Goggins. Uh, so much so that he, uh, that, he pushes himself and his body uh, farther than most people can and probably farther than is really healthy. <laughs> but, you know, respect to him. Shui Ong says, I'm from Burma. What marketing books do you recommend for beginner business owners? I don't know how to do marketing well. Okay. I recommend, I always recommend Dan Kennedy's books. Dan Kennedy. D-A-N, first name. And the next name is Kennedy, like President Kennedy. <laughs> uh, Dan Kennedy has a lot of marketing books. Uh, just do a search online, Dan Kennedy, marketing, Dan Kennedy, sales. And he's got a lot of books. Some of his books are special for certain kinds of businesses. So just find ones, you know, look at the titles and pick, pick a few and read, read them. I think he's a good person to start with very generally about marketing for small businesses. Okay, I'm just jumping to the bottom here and going backwards. A couple more. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Abdullahi, Abdullahi Osman says, A few days ago I read an article that proves that American students are turning dumber and dumber, more and more stupid. It was written on the Freedom Project media site. The education secretary agreed with the author, surprisingly. Definitely. Definitely. American students, American schools are getting stupider and stupider. Americans in general, because of this, are getting stupider and stupider. Not only Americans, but um, certainly this is true. It's because of the schools.
Yeah, like Vladislav, you know, this is like a pickup artist. The guy who wrote, I guess is one of the guys who wrote the book. He's in his 40s, mid 40s, like 45. He's dating five girls at the same time. The girls are 19 to 27 years old. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. I just, for me, it's like, like, I don't know. It sounds, I guess it sounds fun to some people. Like, oh, Playboy, woo, I'm with all these hot girls. So it's all, it's just sex then. That's all he's getting. And I don't know. After a while, it's like it's, sex is a physical pleasure. It's nice. Okay. But but the guy's probably in a sex addict. Why isn't this guy f starting a family? Why isn't he having children? It's an empty life this guy's leading. It just becomes empty. It's just like eating, you know, eating lots of sugary food all the time. It sounds nice. Just eat dessert all the time. Oh, yummy. But, you know, after a while, it just makes you fat and lazy. So I don't know, and it lacks meaning. Um, you know, this is what this is what Roosh. Check out Roosh. Roosh V. Roosh V. R O O S H V. Check out his YouTube's and especially his recent stuff because this is what he realized. He hit his forties, and he realized all this is just meaningless. It's just girls, new girls, new girls, new girls all the time. I have, I'm not, I have no family now. I haven't built anything. I haven't created, you know, a family. Uh, it's just me. I'm still just alone, just me. And just, just playing around with these girls all the time. They're young. I can't even talk to them. They don't even understand me in my life now because I'm older. I have more experience. It's shallow and meaningless. That's the problem with it. I, I'm, you know, if someone wants to live that way, fine. But uh, I, I don't recommend following it. I think it's a, I think it sounds miserable to me. <laughs> it sounds very un, like a miserable life. Okay, I think we're about done. A lot of stuff is asking about what to buy kids, you know, like buying them stuff. You know, the thing is, kids, if if they're not exposed to media or school, if you're homeschooling them, if they're not watching TV, they're pretty happy with simple stuff. Okay, I have a, my nephew. He plays with sticks and bugs and nature. If you get them outdoors in nature, they really don't want much. You know, that, that desire for all the new toys and the electronic stuff and the expensive garbage... It, it's it's not natural. It doesn't come from nowhere. It comes from media, and it comes from other kids, usually at school. Oh, get, did you have the PlayStation? Uh, right? It, it's, it's this kind of social pressure. So if you take them out of that, then most kids are pretty happy with just really basic stuff, even at, a, even at the level of babies. Like my babies, people give us toys, right? But the babies, what they love to play with are like boxes and bags. <laughs> You know, paper bags and boxes, just free stuff, Bo little bottles of stuff. Um, and I, so I don't think you have to worry about it. You don't have to buy them much. Just buy them food and clothes, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the basic stuff. Asking me about the IMF. We're it's kind of a heavy topic. The IMF, International Monetary Fund, helps developing countries like the Ukraine. Do you believe in their goodness? They are satanic and evil. They are going to rob the Ukraine blind. Just ask anybody. Ask anyone from, uh, let's say, Argentina what they think of the IMF and how good the IMF is. <laughs> they destroy countries and economies. That's what they do. So... I'm sad to hear they're doing it to Ukraine. It won't end well. <laughs> I promise you. It's going to end very badly. Okay, I think we're about done. Oh, okay, let's, I'll go with this. 
Elsie with the last question. I think she had the last question yesterday. Um, hi, AJ. Hi, Elsie. Do you script your speaking before a show? No. I find it difficult to talk about a topic all by myself without a script, even in my own native language. No, I don't. I just need... I my What I do for each show is I, I need a topic. That's basically it. I Usually, I'll do a show. I just need a topic. I just need to know... That I, I, a general topic. Uh, today I'm talking about failure <laughs> or a quote. Like yeah, like I did what I did the show seven times down, eight times up. That's all. Just that one sentence. And that's all my planning. Nothing else is scripted. If it's a complicated topic, I might write a couple like a short little outline, like, you know, two or three words for notes just to remind me. Oh, yeah. Talk about that. Talk about that. Talk about that. Just topics. It's not a script. I know I'm never reading anything. I'm never trying to memorize anything. And for this show, I don't even practice. I just talk because I want it to be natural. You know, this the one of the, you know, of course, I'm happy to talk about these topics, but you all are learning English. So I want to speak in the most uh, casual and natural way as I as possible so that you're getting real English, right? Not I'm not an actor reading something because it's it changes the pronunciation. It changes the way of speaking if you if someone is reading a script and this is why if i make a mistake i don't edit i never edit my show right i never also because i'm lazy but <laughs> but the second reason is that uh that way if i make a mistake you hear the mistake if i pause then i uh, i pause if i stop in the middle of a sentence then i do we native speakers do that we all do that so i i'm trying to talk as natural as i can so i don't want to plan it too much i just want it to come out like i would with any normal conversation so no i don't really plan it it take it took some practice to do this right in I, when i first started doing public speaking i could not do this okay i had to have a plan i had to practice and you know many many days before my speech and really you know, practice it and try again and make mistakes. And it was this whole huge planning. And now I just need like one topic and I just talk. <laughs> but I've been doing it a long time. So that's why. All right, guys. It's time to go. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. We're going to do our book club talking about financial freedom again. Financial freedom. Your money or your life. Your money or your life. Tomorrow part. I can't remember, part seven, I think. And then on Sunday, we will continue with our movie club, Jerry Maguire, show me the money. All right, I'll see you this weekend. Lots of love to you. Bye for now.